Hello and welcome back to Homeschool Together Reviews. Hit that subscribe and like button. Make sure we get all the reviews into your YouTube inbox. You're thinking about doing Explode the Code, maybe even dabbled in Explode the Code 1 and you're going to ask me the question, should I continue on to Explode the Code 2? And I think you should. Um, we go ahead and get the digital version of Explode the Code and we put that in about a half inch inch binder and use that as kind of our our way to get around. You can buy the curriculum available online and the workbooks that are available for Gosh, anywhere between 12 to 15 dollars there are half level increments so they say this is level two there's a 2.5 if you need a little bit more assistance with the phonetic spelling or a little bit more um, additional work if your learner uh, desires that or needs that and there's also a, a, a teacher's guide that comes along with these we're not going to be talking about those two things today but if you're really committing to the um, explode the code curriculum um, we have heard from our community um, that getting those extra books is very helpful, especially if it's the first time you're teaching some learning, um, phonics-based learning curriculum. Those books can help you, guide you through, and help you um, understand what you're doing, a lot of the methods that you're trying to do. If you're trying to learn, you're trying to teach your learner um, exactly how to say certain things, or so what type of methods are my learners struggling here? And that can give you some help as well. So definitely recommend you getting those books as well, but we're just going to be showing you what you get in the level two book today. Um, this is continuing on with the short vowel sounds, and we're going to start blending uh, various consonants, both at the beginning and at the end of the words. You get your phonics, you get your reading, um, you get your sentence structure, you get a lot of handwriting, a lot of spelling, which I just love. I love how it's all blended together. Um, with respect to how we use this curriculum, I tend to use this as a review curriculum. So when I get through my, my regular phonics-based curriculum that we kind of complete with, um, within the year, I like to follow up and get them through and explode the code um, level because I, I, I like it as like kind of a reinforcing mechanism. It's a lot of practice and they can go off and do it on their own. Um, and they can really get the, that feeling of mastery, that success that they, you know, wow, look at this thing I'm doing as I'm doing so well. Um, I like using it in that respect, but you can use it as your standalone curriculum. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so let's go ahead and hop into this and see what you get um, in an Explode the Code book. All right, here we are with Explode the Code. We've got the beautiful artwork that you see in all Explode the Code books. Um, basically, we have printed it off in a little binder here, um, hole punched, front and back printing. Makes it super easy. Um, you can slide in any type of um, you know manipulatives or any type of additional um, uh, phonics-based you know either pages or you know work card you know flashcards and things of that nature. You can put that here in the binder as well. It's a nice little kind of a travel thing. Um, I like it because it's very robust. You can slide that into a backpack, go on the road. Um, this is great for a morning basket if you're traveling as well. That's why I like printing these things off. Also, if you have multiple kids, goodness gracious, I don't want to be spending all that money for every single book. I want to be able to print it off on what I need, as well as, you know, what if my learner wants to do this lesson again? Maybe they need a little bit more practice. I can print off those pages again, slap them in the book, and they can do it again. So here we are um, in lesson one, and what we're doing basically is just look, you know, here's a good example of it. Uh, if you're Explode the Code tends to have just basically a handful of activities per page, and they're very often asking the learner to, early in the lesson, to circle things, to identify things. So in this case, we're looking at the image, and we're trying to find the letter combination that matches the, the, the image. So obviously, this is a clown, so you will circle the CL. Here is a block, so we'll do the BL. Here's a cloud, another CL. Here's a flashlight, so FL. Glasses, GL. So we're looking for those type of you know consonant L combos, um, and that is the main focus here. Again, next activity here is they're trying, and you'll see these activities repeat through the lessons. Um, I'm not a big fan of repeated things, but the difficulty keeps moving through. So it's not like you're doing the exact same content, um, but the activities are very much. You'll see these loop back, and I'll I'll show a couple lessons here, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So here we're asking the, the learner to look at this word. I like to have them read this word and then read all the words until they match the word and then go ahead and put the X or circle it, whatever your learner wants to do. Here we have flop and so they have to look for the other flop. So they have to be able to distinguish between an A and an O visually and be able to find that. Here we have glum and they gotta make sure, don't forget that L because gum and glum are one letter off. Now here's where I like the handwriting, but also you're starting to get that spelling activity. And I was just shocked at how well my learner gravitated to explode the code 
when she did, or my youngest, when she did the first level, and now we're doing our regular uh, phonics-based curriculum, and it really helped me there. Um, but her handwriting was great, being able to look at these letters, write them, find the right, right word that matches that, and go ahead and X that out. Next uh, level here is again looking at the at the picture and then circling the right right word. So here's a flat tire. Sometimes your learner may need a little bit of assistance on what this image actually is doing. Like, Daddy, is that a, uh, a melted tire? <laughs> you know, whatever that might be. Oh no, it's a flat. So you're looking for the word flat. Um, here they're pointing to the. Like, is that the shoulder? Is that the neck? No, that's the back. And so they can find the right word. Now this is another good example where they're having to look at the images and go up into a, a, a grouping of words, find the right words, and very often they're using the same skill that they were covering here at the beginning, which is looking for the word uh, starting, the starting word. So here's a flag, and she's going to look through and look for a f, 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 and then she finds it, a flag, and then she'll use that to help co uh, copy that work down. Next here, she's looking at the, or they'll be looking at the, the image, and then they have to go ahead and, and circle the, the phonetic pieces of this. So this is a clip, so they'll col, i, p, and they'll circle each piece, and then they'll go ahead and spell that. Spelling work and the handwriting work is such an under, underrated piece of this curriculum. My, the other phonics curriculum that we use does not have any of this. We have to do additional things for that activities, and I love how this is kind of like bringing it all together. Uh, what I found my reader to struggle a little bit because she was so young when she was starting, so it was maybe a little bit accelerated for her, but actually reading these words, reading each word, each sentence, this is a lot to ask. Um, sometimes I would have her just kind of underscoring certain words that I wanted her to do, and we kind of do it together, and then we would read the sentence together. So whatever type of method you want to do with respect to early literacy activities, do those. Um, but basically what you're doing is you're asking this, can a big clock tick? Well, yes or no, obviously yes. And so they'll go ahead and mark that. And then finally here, we're reading between two sentences and we're going ahead and exiting the one that matches the image. So here we are looking for the fat clam is glad and then she'll go ahead and mark that one. Um, here again, I'm asking very often my learner to read a couple words. When you get to this type of page where this activity requires a lot of reading, which you know, is a stamina problem very often with these early learners, you may only do this much for the day, right? Or you'll do this much for the day and maybe you'll, or you'll do two of these and then one or two of these and then you'll, you'll hop between these pages. Whatever works best for you, whatever stamina level is right for your child, go ahead and, and adjust that. When I'm doing these with my daughter, and this is the end of the, the section, so we'll go to the next lesson, lesson two. But when I'm doing these, I'm typically doing about one page. Sometimes the earlier pages, I mean, she can do two of these pages, but when we get to the end of a lesson, we have to go a little bit slower. So this might take a day or maybe two days to go through. This would take two days to go through in this final one. Um, she will have to reference back words that she had written before and then go ahead and do that copy work. Um, but this level here, she can do in a day. You know, when, we were do, when we were doing the level one, this she could probably do both of these in one day or, or this t these two pages here in one day and then move on. Um, so I would say, you know, if you could do a lesson every two weeks or maybe every three weeks, I think that's just fine. Um, especially if this is you're pairing this with some additional phonics work on the side or, or, or additional work that you're doing elsewhere. You can use this as kind of like a, a spine that you keep coming back to and they're doing this kind of slowly through through the week absolutely worth uh, thinking of it in those terms as well. So let's go ahead and look at lesson two. Again, continuing to work with these kind of prefix uh, letter combos and using those with the vowels that we had learned in level in level one. And then you're, we're, all we're doing is we're just adding um, additional combos and making more complex words. Again, you can see the repeat that we are you're seeing from the previous lesson here. You're seeing the same activities, but obviously different content. Again, the same activity here as well, choosing between two images, finding from a word a word list, and then obviously doing the spelling work here as well. So this is addition, or you can say plus, P-L-U-S, and then you go ahead and write that, finding the, the yes or no, finding which sentence is correct, and then going ahead and doing the spelling. Once you get deeper and deeper and deeper into the lessons, you'll find your learner um, you know, moving at different speeds. I think it's going to get a little bit more difficult towards the end. Sometimes it 
maybe is a little bit easier towards the end because they've learned a bunch of combos and maybe they're getting better with their reading. Whatever that might be, um, do what's best for you. Um, there is no, there are no readers that come with this. There are, uh, there's another workbook called Beyond the Code, but I, I find that that to be a little bit more advanced. So if you're looking for, for these type of books, you may pair this with say like Bob books or any other type of early readers and try to match um, the letter combinations that you're doing here with those readers. Um, if you need some additional readers for your, for your child as you're moving through. So that was a nice little overview of the level two of the Explode the Code. Now remember there's the 0.5 editions, the 2.5 and then the teacher's guide as well. And there's also the, the Beyond the Code books. We were, I'll go ahead and review that Beyond the Code level two some other time. Um, but I would encourage you if you're looking to do kind of fill out the curriculum um, and make it a little bit more complete, I think those uh, 2.5 and the teacher's manual will be very helpful for you. Layering in some additional phonics work and some additional readers um, is great. This book has about 90 pages and about nine or 10 lessons. And you can really imagine yourself doing that over the course of say two to three or four months. And you can probably go through multiple uh, levels in a year um, with the additional work uh, that you may be doing with those other workbooks as well. Um, I love these curriculums, you know, whether you're using it as like a review, that's kind of how we use it. Or if this is your main curriculum, you cannot go wrong. You can get these books pretty much anywhere in a like homeschool store, but most notably you can get them on Amazon and I'll go ahead and have those links down below for you. Um, also consider buying the digital copies, especially if you have multiple learners that you're working with. You know, learners learn all differently. My, my youngest is working well with her memorization and she can go through these books fairly easy. My oldest could not do these. She had to go through more of like a hands-on manipulative style. So um, consider buying the online curriculum, um, the digital curriculum, so you can print it off and see what see what works best for you and it saves you on the cost on the long run. You can buy these online for about $10, $20. You can get sales here and there. The digital copies, you can get multiple levels at a time for like $60, $70. And I'll go ahead and put a link to that um, uh, online uh, option as well. I hope this helped you make a good decision. I know reading curriculums can be really scary, um, but for the price, this is well worth trying out. I've heard so many families have such great experiences with these books. I've seen them in schools. I've seen them with the homeschool community. I've seen them with regular homeschoolers, not at our parent partnership. Explode the Code is a widely used curriculum and you can't go wrong. I know it's hard to make a decision and I think you can make a good one here with Explode the Code.